Hello everyone. Today I want to talk a little bit about how the term quantum is misused by many people in uh, spiritual and self-help circles. This is something I've actually observed uh, for many years now and uh, it actually always bothered me quite a bit. Um, how? Why is that? Well, I first heard about uh, or actually I read about quantum mechanics um, when I was in school. I found a popular science book in my father's uh, bookshelf um, which was about quantum mechanics. My father was a chemist so he actually also had uh, uh, some interest in certain physics and I read this book and I thought wow this is quite interesting and actually this is quite strange and fascinating and this was one of the reasons that I actually decided to get a degree in physics. Um, and I also, besides my actually study in physics, I also read some popular science books about it and uh, still uh, somewhat follow what's going on in science. Um, and um, so I would say that I probably have a certain level of knowledge what is behind this this term and when I see people um, in this kind of self-help uh, and spirituality videos what you can usually see is that they actually they, they use the term but they just use it as a filler for something they want to tell you something they want to believe in and um, actually it usually doesn't have much to do with quantum mechanics um, or in general quantum physics uh, which you could argue if you say quantum mechanics doesn't involve for example doesn't include all of quantum field theory then you could argue that there's quantum physics is much bigger but I, I think that's a little bit a uh, question of how how you want to define things so um, what quantum actually means it's just uh, basically that a wave can only have a, a certain chunk of something which um, or you could also see it as a wave cannot have any any frequency or wavelengths but it can only have certain ones and uh, this is kind of given to you or told to you by this concept of quantum and um, what then happened is uh, this when this was first found then uh, well, in the development of theoretical physics and then the development also of physical experiments, um, the scientists found that there were some strange things occurring which are not are very different from our everyday experience, and so they tried to ex to explain this and also this had uh, some uh, philosophical implications which they tried to think about and they came up with some explanations. Um, which are not physics but which are more philosophical interpretations of how to deal with the physics and some of those uh, interpretations uh, seem a bit strange to us and um, some of them you can kind of connect to certain spiritual ideas so there's one interpretation which is probably the one which was dominant for a long time which basically says um, well, in quantum mechanics we can only give probabilities, so we cannot make the same certain predictions as one would uh, do in classical physics, like in mechanics you can say, okay, if I have all information uh, about the necessary physical properties, um, then I can exactly calculate the, the outcome, which of course in reality most of the time is pretty impossible um, but um, of course if I uh, for example if I shoot a rocket to uh, to space then I have a good enough control of all the relevant factors that I have a very good prediction of where the rocket will end up and uh, so this is obviously something we use all the time and which we're quite good at as a well as a society as the the all the combination of physicists, engineers and uh, other technicians. So this is uh, the way that classical physics uh, sees the world. And uh, in quantum physics actually um, you cannot do this. This is 
um, for certain or for many properties you can only give a probability of what will happen and um, so one interpretation was uh, that came up was related to uh, how is a probability being decided and basically the idea was that in the moment that someone observes a physical event in that moment it is set what is uh, which one of the probabilities will actually occur and um, now there's a some difficulty about how to look at a measurement but some people interpreted this as oh I need a consciousness um, to make this observation which I would say most modern physicists wouldn't see it like this anymore because well you can have a computer do the measurement and uh, then it will be fixed and of course you could always argue yeah but only if someone looks at the data of the computer it will be fixed but this is something which uh, which is not really science anymore and it's probably also not really uh, qualitative philosophy of science anymore and this idea then uh, was written down and it was also mentioned for example in the in this popular science book or popular physics book that I read when I was young and uh, this idea then uh, was read by people who don't didn't actually study the physics but who only read popular science books and people who kind of started mixing it with other ideas and then I think I actually haven't really read this kind of book much but I think then this idea was used by other people and to combine it with their spiritual ideas of any kind and they basically then started writing things down which they thought they understood from some popular science they read without actually ever having done the science and so now we have this uh, this idea that because of quantum physics um, this is an explanation of how you can well basically wish things into reality which is nothing quantum physics has ever said at the very best it said well if there's two options then you need to observe it and then one of them will happen quantum physics has never said that you could actually make a choice about what it is even in this uh, consciously related choice idea um, which which was around um, and still is around as an interpretation of physics so even if you take this interpretation of quantum physics what people make out of it isn't even in this interpretation people just drive it forward and basically they just use it to explain some idea they get from another place like the idea that uh, your thoughts influence reality and even more specific that your thoughts influence reality in a direction that you want um, and I should add that they do this in kind of a magical way because obviously if I think about getting something to drink and then I go and uh, and pour something in a, in a glass then of course I influence reality through my actions so my thoughts lead to my actions and that influences reality um, but a lot of people think like oh just the act of me thinking something and not doing anything yeah that can influence my reality and um, well this is something which scientifically is totally non-proven it's quite unlikely of course we don't know anything everything uh, in the world so to a certain degree it might be true but we can say actually the degree to which it's true it's probably quite small at least as long as influencing uh, the physical world is is concerned um, so whenever you see someone telling something about quantum then you should check is it like a serious scientist preferably with a background in physics um, probably math or theoretical chemistry um, and you could you should look at what are they actually saying are they actually just describing some thing about a property of the physical world or are they trying to sell you some some mind-blowing self-help idea um, or are they trying to use it to explain 
something which is part of their spiritual worldview. Um, and if it's the if it's anything but the first, then you should be very careful because, as I said, usually when I look at what those people say, it's uh, not really related very well to uh, what the science actually means. And I can see that people just looked for something which fitted their ideas and which they felt, oh, this justifies whatever I believe. And then they say, oh, okay, now I can re re take reference to this physics. But they have no idea what it actually says. Um, yeah, so basically, if anything, anybody talks about quantum who isn't clearly talking about the physical phenomenon, um, and not talking about anything about consciousness or something like that, it's probably best to just assume that everything they say is absolutely wrong. Um, or at least, even if there's some grains of the physics in there, but uh, the overall story they tell, it's quite certainly wrong. And in many cases, those people are actually just sprouting out bullshit because they're just saying what they wish to be true and not what actually is observable truth. If you want to check, if you meet such a person and want to check how much they understand about it, you could ask them about what kind of math they know and if they actually ever have looked at the formulas or done anything with the formulas. Um, because I can tell you that the math of quantum physics is... Uh, it's not that easy. You actually need to have a very advanced degree of mathematical understanding to even start doing uh, quantum mechanical calculations or to even st start trying to grasp the uh, the concepts which are behind quantum theory. Um, and frankly, I would never claim that I'm really good at that. I mean, it's been a long time since I took the classes I wasn't all that amazing in those classes. I was good enough to pass them. I think I was good enough to get like a basic understanding of what's going on there, but um, I would never dare to claim that I'm an expert on this in any way. And uh, so whenever I see someone who basically claims to be an expert and have some deep insight into it, who doesn't seem to have any recognizable background in physics or math, um, or, or uh, as I said, probably something like theoretical chemistry, um, then, then I get careful, because then it's like, okay, I, I'm, well, but if you're not able, if you don't have the skills to understand the math, how are you trying to explain something by using this term? Um, and I would, I would suggest that you, that you act the same way. Be very careful about this um, and um, I would also urge you read up with some serious popular science books on quantum mechanics it's a very fascinating subject but uh, be very careful to make any assumptions beyond the physics because this is very dangerous um, for certain to it, it, it's very dangerous that it makes you open to fall for uh, for some strange bullshit, which in, in some cases it's also, it's actually close to, uh, in my mind, it's, um, it's basically just, uh, yeah, someone trying to, to trick you in my way. It's like, a yeah, people trying to trick you, so stay away from this. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for today. Uh, as always, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel happy to share them. If you enjoy my videos, feel free to like my channel, to uh, subscribe to my channel, to uh, to uh, invite other people to watch this or any other videos. Um, and with this, I'll leave you for today. I hope you're all doing well. Um, and until next time, bye.